Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video. Unfortunately for Tycoon Real Estate founder and CEO Aaron McDaniel, the Sharks not only hated the product idea, but some of them hated the entrepreneur behind it. McDaniel pitched his real estate crowdfunding service and got a hot star reception from the Sharks, who called his pitch risky and a ripoff on season 6. Launching straight into the pitch at breakneck speed, Aaron told the Sharks that real estate had been proven to be the most constantly safe way to grow wealth for hundreds of years. However, Aaron explained the real estate negotiations could be intimidating, difficult, and expensive, with the best deals being reserved for the rich. He was seeking a $50,000 investment for 5% of the company. However, after hearing the pitch for just 60 seconds, Mark Cuban said he hated it and was out. Cuban yelled that the idea was scamming, Barbara Corcoran thought it was spooky, and O'Leary, who was actually interested in making a deal, asked McDaniel if he had a criminal record. Kevin O'Leary offered $50,000 for a 50% stake, but stipulated the company must be rebranded under his own name. McDaniel refused the offer. Matisse Salon entered the tank in 2011, looking for $40,000 for 20% of the company Wake and Bacon, which made a wooden alarm clock that boils bacon set to the time you wake up. Salon posted his Wake and Bacon on his own website online, and it has since then gone viral. According to him, hundreds of people have emailed him with requests for the Wake and Bacon. He brought a few pictures of the potential design of the new Wake and Bacon, which displays a toaster oven-type alarm clock that has ears and hooves that resemble a pig. Not only did Salon not know the basics like the cost of production, but the clock was a potential fire hazard. On top of that, the Sharks pointed out that the novelty would eventually wear thin for many Bacon fans, whose rooms with a permanent aroma of grease. Neither of the Sharks liked the idea, and O'Leary even told him that his product would end up in his museum of really bad ideas that kill people. This is going to be a present for Dad because it's so darn stupid. <laughs> and Mark Cuban puts his dough into stupid ideas? Is that what I'm hearing here today? It's a gag gift. The problem is, I'm not going to put up the 130000 Copa Davino founder James Martin walked away from Sharks offers not just once, but twice. He first pitched his single-serving wine company Copa Davino in Season 2, leaving multiple deals on the table because he found the offers too low. But he also did the same thing in Season 3. He was asking for $600,000 and offering a 20% stake in his business. Kevin O'Leary was intrigued and offered $600,000 for a 51% stake in the company, which Martin had to turn down. After leaving without a deal, Copa de Vino's success exploded. So much so, the producers decided to bring him back the next season, which they probably think now was a mistake. Martin later admitted that he primarily just came back to rub it in the faces of the Sharks, that he found success without them. Though Sharks were willing to negotiate on Martin's terms, he spent such a long time negotiating with the Sharks in his second pitch that they became convinced that he was merely using the show as an advertising platform and had no intention of ever making a deal. After smugly sipping his wine through much of his pitch while showing little interest in what they were saying, the Sharks kicked him to the curb a second time. The biggest deal in Shark Tank history is also the scariest. On episode 6 of season 5, Melissa Carbone manages to get $2 million from Mark Cuban in exchange for a 20% stake in her company, making it one of the best Shark Tank episodes. Her entertainment company called 1031 Productions creates and produces live horror productions. In one of the more elaborate entrances in the history of Shark Tank, Melissa entered accompanied by a ghoulish woman to set the tone of the business. Suddenly, a scarecrow came to life, an evil shaman, and a chainsaw executioner stormed onto the stage to give the judges a fright, particularly Damon and Robert, who seemed visibly shaken by the frightening display. Melissa was making efforts to scare the judges into investing in 1031 Productions. She went into business intending to stage the best haunted hayrides possible, and almost immediately she made a local name for herself. Eventually, she hoped for 1031 to be the world's largest Halloween-based entertainment company. This would, of course, depend on the shark she presented her plan of expanding the haunted hayride into New York. Its dense population and high concentration of acting talent made it the perfect choice for expansion. Thanks to Cuban's investment, Carbone has now expanded 1031 Productions across the country. Cuban also helped Carbone secure a ticketing distribution contract with Live Nation, and 1031 Productions expects to make $3 million this year in sales. That's all the time we have for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time.